Hi guys, Mike here from Com3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to part five of our first person controller series. In the last video, we added crouching and in this video, we're gonna add the head bob effect just to give it a bit more of a dynamic feel. And just like always, we're gonna wrap this in a feature toggle so we can enable or disable this functionality as and when we want. So we're just gonna jump straight into it right after I thank Gigatank3000 for sponsoring this video. I've got his links down in the description below. Go check him out on Twitter. Go check out his website. Keep up to date with all the great stuff that he's doing. And I also just want to thank everybody supporting me over on Patreon. You guys, you guys are fantastic. All right, same as always, quick recap of what we already have. We have movement, we have mouse look, left shift to sprint, control, left control, crouches and stands. And this is where we're up to now. But now we just want to add that little bit of dynamic feel to it. And we're going to add a head bob to the camera. So let's open up a script and get working on it. So before we do anything else, let's just add this feature toggle in here so we can use head bob. Next, we're gonna create an entire new section for our head bob settings. That's a header, head bob parameters. So just to make it feel a little bit more dynamic and the fact that we love adding extra settings in here for you guys to play around with, we're gonna have a different head bob value for whether or not we're crouching, standing, or sprinting. So we're gonna add two floats for each of those. So that's gonna be a serialized field, private float, walk, bob, speed. I'm gonna set that to 14 by default. Again, you can go in, you can tweak these to whatever values you like. Next, we want a walk, bob, amount. So that's going to be the actual movement of the camera. So these we don't want too high. So for the walk, I'm just going to use 0.5. Then I'm just going to copy these two more times. I'm going to add in a sprint bob amount, a sprint bob speed, crouch bob speed, and a crouch bob amount. And we're going to set our sprint bob speed to be 18, so the faster we're moving, the faster we want to bob, and we also want to bob slightly more. Instead of 0.5, I'm gonna make that one, and then for our crouch speed, again, we want this to go slower, so I'm gonna make that eight, and make a crouch bob amount 0.25. Then we just need two private floats, so we're not serializing these because we're not changing them in the inspector, and that's gonna be our default Y position of our camera, and another float, which is just gonna be a timer. And we're gonna use that timer to determine whereabouts our camera needs to be vertically for the head bob. Inside of our update, we're gonna check if we can use head bob, we're gonna call handle head bob, which we'll go ahead and create right down here. Private void handle head bob. But the first thing we want to do before we start doing that is we want to actually cache our default Y position. So inside of a wake, after we've grabbed our camera and our controller, we're going to set default Y position equal to our player's camera dot transform dot local position dot Y, just so we have that default Y position because when we're not moving, we wanna make sure that our camera returns back to that default position. So what do we wanna do inside handle head bob? Well, the first thing we wanna make sure is that we're actually grounded, because if our player isn't grounded, we shouldn't actually be doing any sort of head bob, in my opinion, anyway. So I'm just gonna do, if character controller is not grounded, I'm just gonna return out of this statement, nice and simple. But if we are grounded, we want to apply that head bob effect to our camera. So what do we need to do? Well, first thing, we need to make sure that we're actually moving because having a head bob while you're static isn't that useful. So let's check if mathf.absolute, and what that does is it's going to give an absolute value of a float that you pass in. In other words, we're going to get the positive value regardless of if it's negative or not. So let me explain that a little bit better. If we pass in a float and that float value is 1, mathf.abs is going to give us 1. If we pass in negative 1, it's going to give us 
positive one. So the reason we're doing that is because our movement directions can either be positive or negative, depending on whether or not you're moving forward, backward, left and right. But we don't care what direction you're facing. We just want to know that we have a value greater than what it would be if they were standing still. So the positive or negative doesn't matter. So we can strip that out completely and just work on the raw absolute value. So I hope that made sense. So the float that we're going to pass in is a move direction dot X. So if we're moving any value on the X axis, so we'll check if it's greater than 0 0.1 or so double pipe mathf dot abs again. And this time we're going to pass in move direction dot Z. So if we're moving forward or backwards, we'll check if that's greater than 0 0.1. If it is, we have some sort of movement, so we should be applying our head bob effect. So let's start incrementing that timer that we've set. So timer is plus equal to time dot delta time multiplied by, and then we'll add some brackets here, and now we're going to determine whether or not we're walking, sprinting, or crouching, so we can amend that time as we need it. So let's check first is crouching. You may remember this from one of the previous videos where I do a ternary operator inside of a ternary operator. Now it does look kind of confusing at first when you're not used to it, but honestly this is a really good way of cutting down on nested if statements. So if we are crouching, we want to add in time.delta time times by our crouch bob speed. If we're not, we'll check if we're sprinting. If we are sprinting, we want a sprint bob speed or else we'll just use our walking bob speed. Next, we want to actually control the position of our player's camera to match what the expected position is going to be for the head bob. So that'll be player camera dot transform dot local position. We're going to set that equal to a new vector three. And I'm going to split this down over multiple lines because this line does get quite long. So on the X, we don't want to amend that. So we'll just set it to player camera dot transform dot local position dot x next is the y value which is the one that we're actually interested in amending so let's work out what position that needs to be based on our timer variable so the way that we do that we set our default y position and we'll add to that mathf dot sign and we'll pass in our timer so what mathf dot sign is going to do is going to give us as you may expect, the sine angle of a float that we pass in. So that's going to be a value between negative one and positive one. So if the sine value of timer is in the negative, then we're going to lower the camera. If it's in the positive, we're going to raise the camera. But now we need to determine at what speed we want to do that. So we're going to multiply that. And again, here, we're going to need to determine if we're crouching, sprinting, or walking for the speed, or for the amount, rather. So just like before, are we crouching? Then we'll multiply it by our crouch bob amount. If we're not, we'll check if we're sprinting. If we are, we'll use our sprint bob amount. And if we're not doing either of those, we'll use our walk bob amount. And then we want to keep that Z value exactly the same. So that's going to be player camera dot transform dot local position dot Z. And now let's see if this is working. We have our parameters down here. We hit play. Well, it's working. And the sprint is working and the crouch is working. But they are very, very large movements. What have I done wrong up here? Okay, so I've misread my own notes. And this should actually be 0 0.05, 0 0.1, and 0.025 for the walk, sprint, and crouch amounts. So let's save that. That may not actually change in my inspector because, yeah, it hasn't. So let's change them over in the inspector as well. 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.025. Now, if we play it, we should have much more realistic head bobbing. And we do. We can see we just have that slight bit of bob. We sprint, we have even more. If we're not actually grounded, we don't have any bob at all. And then as we crouch, we've just got that tiny amount of head bob going on. Perfect. And you can amend those values to be whatever you feel right for your game. And there we have it. We now have 
head bob inside of our game just gives it that little bit of an extra touch when your character's moving. And in the next video, what we're going to do, we're going to touch on something that we haven't actually done any of yet, and that's handling slopes. Now, without going into too much detail in this video, Unity's character controller has a slope limit variable, and that works by stopping your character from moving forward on any platform that is above a certain angle but it doesn't stop you jumping up the platform. Once you're on there, it doesn't matter. So what we want to do, we want to make sure that we still limit that angle, but we want to make sure that you slide back down that slope. And that's what we're going to do next week. So look out for that one. But it's been great talking to you guys again. See you again next week. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel for weekly Unity tutorials.